Was it worth it trading Luis Sessa? <laughs> That's the question. You know, he, he's him and Justin Wilson are in Cincinnati now. And I know the motivation for the Yankees was to move some of his gargantuan $1 million salary um, off the book and stay under the $210 million threshold, which to them is considered a hard salary cap. But, you know, they're already significantly, well, not significantly, but several million under the threshold with all the moves that they did. But look at, what's, look at the ripple effects that it's had on the bullpen itself. And we've already talked about, like, you know, the bullpen and the starting pitching and kind of a rotating just conundrum of inconsistency and injury. Well, look at me and Johnny LaWiseka hurt. Chad Green gassed, right? Britain out until the middle of next year, maybe even at the end of next year. Darren O'Day done. You know, they moved him and Justin Wilson. Now he's got about a 1.4 ERA in 19 games in Cincinnati right now, and even Justin Wilson is pitching better over there too. I know Justin Wilson had kind of a funky contract, so they wanted to move that, but like, I mean, did you have to give up Sessa to do it? Sessa was also under team control until 2024. So he would have been a valuable piece, and he's one. He was one of the few Yankees who could throw multiple innings. I know they got Michael King now, and Severino coming back, and some of these other guys. But like, Sessa was one of these guys, and he had a good, you know, record with the Yankees. He was reliable, and <clears throat> look what they gave up. You know, and, and there's no guarantee that the, the prospect Jason Parker is going to amount to anything over here in New York. Hopefully, he does, but. I mean, just to stay under the threshold, which they which they did anyway. Like, could they? Like, instead of giving so much money to Britain and and so much money to O'Day, you know, they had to move Luis Sessa, who was I don't I don't I just don't understand the logic. And was it that much? Was it, I mean was it necessary to move him to stay under the threshold? I mean, now that we know what they did, no, it was not. I guess they felt that way at the time, but like, look at the ripple effects it's had on the Yankees. I mean, they could have really used him over the last two months. Really. Really used him over the last two months. And, and instead, he's him and Wilson are over there with a resurgent Cincinnati team. We're likely going to be in the playoffs, and there's a good chance the Yankees will not. And, <laughs> you know, this is this is where I don't understand the logic of, and this is, and this has how written all over it, Hal Steinbrenner, ownership, <clears throat> and Cashman's kind of blueprint, but Hal written all over it. I mean, this is this is not an Aaron Boone thing, and I don't know how much it's a Brian Cashman thing. This is a Hal Steinbrenner thing. The owner who stays behind the scenes and never has to answer questions like, why the hell did you trade Luis Sessa? You know, why is Rugnan Odor not playing right now? Why? He doesn't have to answer those questions. And that's the, the despicable part for Yankee fans. And even just baseball fans in general. But this is one of the moves that the Yankees made that were I don't think was a sound move. And again, I hope this kid Jason Parker pans out. He's a 23-year-old young pitcher. Looks like he's a starting pitching prospect. And hopefully pans out to make the trade worthwhile. Otherwise, you know, it's a short-term and a long-term loss for the Yankees. You know, and again, for a small salary, it's not like you're moving a $10 million salary and attaching a big prospect to it. No, you're moving Luis Sessa, okay? Like Zach Britton would have been a huge move because he was making $13 million. He was making 13 times more than Sessa's making. Or Chapman, 18 times more than Sessa's making. But you move Sessa, who has been more reliable than both of them, So why? This is you know this is where I, I I question the ownership and their ability to put together a winning team and not having the right people at the top to help question management and ownership and be like what are you guys why what the hell are you doing why are you doing this what are you thinking because you're clearly not in a lot of circumstances a lot of situations. And this is one where I think the Yankees should have never done. Never done. Um, again, not a knock on Jason Parker. It's just a, I don't think they should have moved Luis Sessa. 
I really, really don't. He could have come in handy, really, really handy, and I think the Yankees might be in a little bit of a better position. Green wouldn't be as gassed right now, and, you know, you know, it's, yeah, you guys got to do better, man. You guys got to make better moves than that, man.